Welcome to this week's edition of Mainly Motorsports, and I uh, really want to thank a uh, special guest, uh, Pro Series champion from 2014, Dave Farrington Jr., and welcome into Mainly Motorsports. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for having me. Now, I'm not going to drag my feet getting into it. I want to know, what has this last year been like, or last win this winter been like? It's been, a, it's been an evolution. I mean, we've been busy this offseason more than I ever imagined, uh, Andy Cusack you know, told us that the real work is just beginning after we won the championship, and I kind of didn't understand what he meant by that. And I quickly found out with the trips to Charlotte, the trip to Florida, you know, all the interviews and uh, reports that came out on me, and it, we really had an eventful off offseason. Um, and, you know, met the more, governor. more to come. Yeah, met the, you know, Governor LePage. That was really cool to sit one-on-one -on -one with him and, you know, talk with him for about 15 minutes. I got him to put the orange hat on, gave him an orange shirt, so hopefully he became a big fan of mine, and maybe we'll see him at Beechridge uh, one time this season. Yeah, no, and that's, uh, and people that don't realize it, and we've had Dan McKay, and we've talked to him about it, we've talked to Billy Rogers, we've talked to Mike Rowe about this championship in the Pro Series and what it means, and yeah, those things that you just talked about, that's not something that any champion gets, you know, that goes along with NASCAR, you know, and it just shows how big NASCAR really is. It was certainly an honor, you know, for the, the banquet down to Charlotte, sitting at the Westin, having a drink with Mike Joy, Dick Berger, and, you know, right next to you, and, you know, realizing these, these are guys you see on TV, Mike Joy obviously announcing with Fox for NASCAR, and, you know, get to meet the, the national champion, Anthony Anders, and see the plugs that Keith Rockle put oh, yeah. into him down there as well, and just be a part of it, and what an atmosphere it really is, and, you know, seeing that just gives us more determination to want to make it back there next year. Now, when you rolled into Beechridge opening day last year, was it in your plans to chase points there? Or was it, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, it was a night, everybody's on four tires, it's opening day, let's go race, see how we make out, and boom, I think you finished top three, right? Yeah, we, uh, we ran Corey Bubar, we ran him all night long. We, we drew number one out of the pill bucket, first of all, so that was quite a good start to our year and won our heat race over DJ Shaw and led the first 20 or so laps. Corey got by us, led some laps, and him and I battled back and forth, and really in the end he just got us on a late restart, and we finished second to him that night. And we kind of came into the season, you know, kept telling everybody, we're going to take it one week at a time. You know, if we remain up in the top two or three in points, we'll come back the next week, and kept telling people that. Even in July, we kept telling people that, but... I think we started to realize that we were going to keep going on this mission towards the championship. Yeah, and, and probably the pinnacle of the season was when earlier in the year you had some motor troubles. And uh, a competitor who you ended up beating for the championship, Reed Lamper, you know, they came forward, and I don't know all the specifics, but, uh, you know, you ran his backup car that night. And without that, I don't know if you're still sitting here as a champion. No, you're probably right. You know, we ran the 125 lap you know, non-points race essentially on Saturday and uh, broke a drive shaft in the first round of practice and motor ran great uh, the rest of the night and then first round of practice on the Miller Lite fireworks special for Tuesday, uh, the motor seized up and blew right then and there and that was a points race for us that night and, you know, instantly just scrambling, what are we going to do? We went in as the point leader that night and I remember walking over to Mike Landry and you know, because he was a distance competitor as well with our chassis and, you know, saying, hey, what are we going to do? And we look around and at that time I was with Mike, Scott Lamfer happened to be pulling in with his trailer, which we always saw at the racetrack every week. Never really knew what was in there because they never had to unload it or yeah. anything else. So Mike said, well, go talk to Scott and he's got a backup car in there. And I'm thinking, well, this is interesting. The guy who's second in points to us, and I'm going to go ask if he wants to lend us a backup car to us. Okay, worth a shot. I was willing to do whatever it had to take to get in a car that night. There was no way we were going to drive back to Jay to get our other car because yep. that would have been three hours right then and there, and probably the feature would have already been running at that time. So that wasn't an option. So somehow, graciously, Scott Lamfer, the folks from his team, Scott's Recreation, pulled out their backup car. Uh, I somehow squeezed into it. You know, Reed's quite a bit different size, yeah. shape-wise, than I am. Uh, put a different steering wheel on, change the springs, give him a little stiffer springs because he's a little bit lighter than I am, of course. Took off some lead and 
first round of practice was essentially our heat race, and um, you know the rest was history. Just made a few adjustments in the feature and wound up 11th. Reed won that night, so that was great. Um, you know, maybe a little calmer, good luck yeah. versus them lending us the car, and he went out win that race. And yeah, you're right. It was absolutely a turning point in the year for us. Um, you know, we lost the point lead that night, but we only fell from first to third. Whereas if we wouldn't have even competed that night, we would have went from first to ninth. Yeah. So, but after that night, I think everything just fell into place. And, you know, the rest of the year, I don't think you had any troubles anywhere. And uh, each week, it seemed like you would stretch that lead. You didn't win any races. So there was probably guys that gained on you in the points each week. But the same guys that gained this week were also the same guys that lost in the next week. Right. And we had the Pro All-Star Series race the following week uh, after that. So we kind of got to settle down, regroup, you know, get a motor ready to go for our primary car. But uh, decided, hey, this ain't going to be ready in a week. And we got this apt legal car with a Ford 347 motor in it. Let's give this a shot in a pass race. So we did. Won our heat race, started third and ran top five for a majority of the race till we had a flat right front. But, you know, we brought that car back the following week to run in a weekly race at Beach Ridge one time and almost won the thing. Um, so that just went to show us we had two proven cars that were capable of winning on any given night at Beach Ridge. And you're right, from there, the rest was history. We got that new motor in our primary car the following week, uh, the weekend of Oxford 250 and never finished outside of the top five once we got that new motor in the car. Yeah, no, and it was amazing. And to do what you did at that track, because you know, you've been around racing, I know you're young, 23, but still you've been around the sport. You've even paid attention before you started racing because you were heavily in the go-karts. But have you ever seen competition like you race against that Beach Ridge in the Pro Series on a weekly basis? Opening night we had 28 cars and you, know, you had the likes of DJ Shaw there, um, Reed Lanfrew, you know, again, he's young too, but he was, you know, very stiff competition and Kelly Moore and all the others at Beechridge and, you know, what a car count they had all year long. You know, we only dipped under 21 cars once throughout the whole year. So it was, you know, quite a competition level. Yeah, like and mentioned. the guys capable of winning. Absolutely. You know, like you said, we never won a race. There was some frustration sometimes there when uh, Bubar beat us twice, uh, Kelly Moore got us once, and then the the race where Tyler King beat us there at the end after we had, I don't know how many late race restarts. Um, so, you know, I know there's a Speed 51 article where they got a picture of me sitting on the nose of my car in frustration with my head down and everything else. But, you know, we, we proved we didn't need to win a race to win the championship. We just stayed consistent. Well, it's funny because uh, it was about two thirds of the way, maybe three quarters of the way through the year. I was there one Saturday night and Scott Lamper stopped and talked to me and and that's exactly what he said, because I told him at the beginning of the year when he, we talked about, you know, we need to win a race. And I said, Scott, you don't need to win a race. You need to finish races. And I said, you know, you can win a championship here without winning a race. And he came up to me, and that's what he said that night. He said, I think you're right, because I think it's going to happen this year. He says, I don't know if Dave's going to be able to win a race. And, you know, I think there was probably two or three weeks left. And he goes, and he's going to win a championship. I go, no, you're exactly right. And so it's just consistency pays off. Look at Ryan Newman last year, you know. That's right, yeah. I mean, we didn't go from week to week, make big changes or anything like that. We started off the year with a great package and we just tweaked on it a little bit every week. You know, When we blew the motor, we had to go from a built motor to a crate motor, so we made the adjustment to softer springs in the front. It worked the first time out, so we just kept doing what we were doing. You know, Don't do anything crazy to No, oh, yeah, no, once you up. find something that works, stay with it. Absolutely. But and, uh, no, you're right, and we're gonna take a break, Dave, when we come back. I want to talk about 2015 and what your plans are. Obviously, I can imagine you're going back to defend, but uh, you're a guy that runs a lot of races, and, uh, and I'm sure that uh, you've got some news about that and what your plans are for 2015. So we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back here with the champion from the Pro Series at Beach Ridge, Dave Farrington, Jr. <laughs> Get the right car at the right price, otmotorsales.com.
Not sure what brand tire to buy? Town Fair Tire has them all. Michelin, Goodyear, Firestone, Bridgestone, Pirelli, Toyo, Yokohama, Hankook, and more. No matter what size or brand, Town Fair Tire beats all the competition, even online prices. We'll also do a free front wheel alignment with any tire purchase. Name brand tires. The lowest prices. Free alignment? Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Name brands at discount prices. Town Fair Today's vehicles are equipped with complex safety features such as anti-lock brakes, seat belt restraints, and airbag systems. Even collision avoidance systems. Not available in all models. Hi, I'm Sean Moody from Moody's Collision Centers. We don't wish bad luck on anyone, but even with today's technology, we need to keep our eyes on the road and our hands on the wheel. Moody's Collision Centers, now with nine locations in Maine. Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by... Mount Lee Saloon, Route 1 in Arundel. Stop by and see why me and my friends say, who has more fun than us? We do! LKQ Core. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Located on Route 202 in Gorham. Southern Maine Motors. Out to be Maine's number one Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealership. Route 1 Saco. Now, before there was the big cars, and you know, we're going to talk about 2015, mm -hmm. talk about the go-karts. I mean, yeah. you were the, one of those top dogs up there at Oxford. And, you know, and I was looking the other day on, you know, through the, the names that have come through there, and there's quite a few of you that have gone on to the big cars and made names for yourselves, and some others that are still going to go on and make names for themselves. Right. Yeah, we, uh, we obviously had quite a career in go-kart racing uh, in nine years with the 276 career feature wins, the 21 championships throughout New England, uh, won a WKA regional championship as well. And it's certainly Oxford, we held the most feature wins at 39 for quite a while until I believe Brandon Varney came in and, and took that over. Um, but certainly from the go-kart years, after our final year when I was 15 and was running the likes of the Western Maine Modified, Star Champ and Unrestricted, trying to run all three of those in one night at Oxford. Uh, which we were pretty successful at uh, for the most part. We, we get jumped into the pro stock with certainly high expectations, you know, after all the success we had. And, you know, I, I think we sort of took a step back in our racing career because we bought a car. You know, it was a pro stock, yes, but it was a car that was older than I was. And, yeah. you know, really didn't have the best of equipment. It was more just a startup car to get used to driving the thing and ran West Cassett for a couple of years and, and really just got off on the wrong foot, struggled quite a bit, only maybe had a couple top tens our first year. Uh, finished 11th in the points of West Cassett our first year when they had that 10,000 a win championship which Randy Turner took. So there was a lot of cars running you know my first year as well but we really, I mean, with that first car we bought, you know three years we had it and I think it just we took a step backwards when we got that car. But it also had to teach you guys you know the, the not give up attitude, the, yeah. you know yeah, so then when you get that good piece and you're able to show your talents and your team's talents, you know? Yeah, I mean, it was really, like you said, getting used to it. Um, I think we probably waited a year or two too long to really buy a new car and get the good equipment. But that's really what the time was doing, was building up all our equipment. You know, we bought the shocks. We bought another motor. We bought finally the new car from Jeff Taylor in 2011 when we decided to run at full time. and finally started to build up our equipment, you know, sort of the startup cost in your business per se. Yeah, no, exactly. Now 2015, obviously you've got to go back and defend that championship, right? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to say we'll take it week by week, uh, see where we are after one week at a time in the points, but you know, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, it's very hard to go away from Beechridge after the success we had, you know, the, the staff and everything are so welcoming, you know, we need them as much as they need us. It's, you know, it's very, obvious to call them our home track in many ways and many reasons too. Uh, aside from that, you know, looking at our schedule, there's a possibility of 35 races, believe it or not, amongst uh, a couple of act races with uh, the Governor's Cup at Lee. Uh, maybe try to run both cars at Oxford uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, if we can get enough help, that'd be great. If not, we're just going to have to focus on one car and stick to reality, I guess, in a yeah. way. Um, but certainly a real busy schedule that can carry us from April all the way through October. Now, last year you dabbled a little bit, but do you think that busy of a schedule will take away from your Saturday night program? Not at all. I mean, I think the, 
the NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series points at Beechridge is our top priority again. We want to, again, go back to Charlotte and experience that atmosphere one more time. It's, and I don't know when the last time anybody went back to back at Beechridge. I don't know if it was Bab or Billadoo, but, you know, certainly McKeg didn't, Rogers didn't, ba you know, Bradley Babb didn't, Mike Rowe has won two, but he had a few yeah. years in between, you know, yourself. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know when the last time was. So, yeah, that'd be quite a feat. And, you know, and let's face it, that competition is so tough. Right. Yeah. I think, I think it was 06, 07. I think it was bad. Yeah. You know, just from a number standpoint, because I like to go into their website, look at their history of champions and see my name there and have that really sink in, realize we, we really did it. We really won the championship here at Beechridge. Yeah. No, exactly. Now, you were the surprise last year. You know, we talked off air. You know, it was three quarters away before the season was over, before anybody knew who you were, leading the points and everything, getting ready to plan your, plan your trip to Charlotte, and now people start asking about you. You've raced there a year. You know who your competitors are. Who do you see, a couple guys, that are potentially the Dave Farringtons that nobody's going to talk about when they roll in opening day, but three th quarters of the way through the year, they could be the guy like, wow, they stepped up their game. Yeah. Who, give me a couple. Well, that's tough. Of course, I'd like to say Reed Lanford, but we already know who he is. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously we know who they all are, but two that you that you could find themselves in the championship hunt that maybe aren't expected at the beginning of the year. Hey, you know, that's a tough question. I, I look at the points from this past season. You know, Corey Bubar, of course, he won the four races, but he had the struggles uh, quite a bit with a, quite a few DNFs. He ended up ninth in points, so he's obviously a big concern to me. Um, whether he's unnoticed or not noticed, he should be noticed, certainly, with his potential. Um, Evan Boyer, you know, he won a race uh, in 2013, uh, you know, kind of had a off season, I guess, in 2014, kind of struggled a lot, some bad luck here and there, so he could, he could possibly, uh, you know, be a threat towards the middle end of the year. Um, John Peters went out and won a race at West Cassett, so that's got to build his morale, too. And then we got, you know, a few rookies coming in, like Travis Buzzle, I believe, uh, you know, when thinking of Jacob Dorr, uh, and, uh, you know, they're all tough. Any yeah, well, and it's funny because one of my favorite shows of the year is Dan Walker comes on, and we do our Petridge preview, and we each talk about each division, and then we pick you know, a couple guys that, who we think is going to be the champions in each classes. And your name wasn't picked last year. Nope. And you know what I mean? And not, nothing against you. I mean, obviously, we didn't know you were coming full-time, mm -hmm. but, yeah, you came in under the radar, and it was you know, half, three quarters of the way through the year before anybody took you serious, you know, right. and then by that time it was too late, you know, they had nothing but looking at the taillights of that 23. Yeah, and you're right to that point too about, you know, picking the champion. I remember going on Beatridge's Facebook page and reading down through the 100, 200 plus comments that people mentioned who they thought would win and not a single one that mentioned car number 23, Farrington or anything like that. So, you know, that, that kind of itself drives a little motivation into you as well to prove the point and uh, follow up with that as well. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. Now, you're talking about you're going to run some act and pass races. You've got a car that can convert either or. What do you, Dave Farrington, the driver, see the difference of act versus pass? It's very interesting now with the merger, of course. You know, I got to talk with Tom Curley down in New Smyrna a couple months ago, and, um, you know, God bless his soul, the guy is still fighting and you know, loves and is passionate for what he does in the racing world. So it, it's pretty interesting to see them come together like this and race on the same day at the same track and not interfere with the Auction 250 and the International 500. And, you know, like I said before, we can, we can take our ACT legal car and easily turn it into our Super late model within a matter of uh, four to six hours. Um, so, I mean, to me, there, there ain't a whole lot of difference. You know, you got the shocks, the motor, the obvious things to me, but, you know, both cars that we have through distance racing, you know, are a high level and could win on any given night, I believe. Yeah, no, that's true. We're here with 2014 Pro Series champion Dave Farrington Jr. And I'm going to take a break. We come back. The other big news of the winter that has happened to you that yeah. winning that championship probably played a part in helping you get to where you are in this level. And now we're talking about the Kowicki driver development deal. So we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with Dave Farrington Jr. Hi, I'm Scott from Scott's Recreation. 2014 was our best year ever. 
We have been named Maine's largest travel trailer dealer, Maine's largest fifth wheel dealer, Maine's largest motorhome dealer, and Maine's number one volume dealer for all RVs. Why? Selection, prices, and a relaxed, no pressure sales process. For 2015, we've brought in even more RVs. See our complete inventory online at scottsrecreation.com. Scott's Recreation, Turner and Manchester, Maine. Hi, I'm Johnny Wolf. And I'm Dan Wolf. We've been selling and servicing vehicles on Route 25 in Gorham since 1972. Wolf Auto Service offers state inspections, tires, brakes, and suspension. 21st Century Motors has a great selection of cars and trucks starting at $29.99. With no mortgage and low overhead, we sell and service at guaranteed lowest prices. We're just six miles west of Turnpike Exit 47 on Route 25 in Gorham. Online at 21stCenturyMaine.com. For a trusted name in residential and commercial site work in the Southern Maine area, call Peter Pettit Excavating. We can handle everything from the complete house lot to those nasty water and sewer line repairs. Septic systems are another area that we specialize in. During the snow season, Pettit Excavating has the equipment to handle any size job. And when the race season arrives, be sure to follow the number 7 Hewitt's Family Restaurant Chevrolet on the past Super Late Model Tour. Call 207-282-9305 to get the job done right. That's Peter Pettit Excavating. Now, before we went to break, we teased them a little bit about the Kowicki driver development deal. And uh, why don't you tell the viewers, you know, a little bit about it and, you know, how it became that you got involved and, uh, you know, because you had to apply. And I know you weren't right. the only one up from the area that applied for it. Yeah, certainly the Allen Kowicki drive, driver development program um, first came out this off season, probably around Christmas time, maybe a little earlier. And, uh, you know, the application process itself was pretty vigorous. So I think I ended up sending over them about uh, 12, 13 different attachments, you know, a bunch of stories, headlines, um, my resume, my mechanical engineering background, still pursuing a degree uh, for my master's in business as well at the University of Maine. Um, letters of recommendation uh, through track owners, CEOs and whatnot. And then uh, you know, also realizing how I relate to Alan in, in certain ways. You know, I, One of the funny things I put in my Resume was talking about the time uh, I raced at Woodstock, Connecticut during the Woodstock Fair weekend, and uh, I won four features that weekend. And I believe on my last feature, I did a Polish victory lap like Alan would have done, and they wanted to disqualify me for it. And I had no idea why, but you know, Alan made that backwards victory lap famous. Try that at Beechridge. Let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> I bet you could. I don't know if you get disqualified, but yeah, and tracks frown on that because of the safety you know right. obviously uh, you know when Allen did it in NASCAR you don't have people running all over the track and the workers and the wreckers and everybody's trying to get out of there but uh, yeah I mean anybody you know from your generation a lot of people don't know about Alan Kowicki but yeah he he did it the old school way I mean we turn the TV on now and we see the prima donna drivers and you know uh, yeah they're not hauling their cars to the track and they're not working on their cars I mean they're doing appearances or got their motor coaches Alan in his early years, hauled his car to the track, mm -hmm. worked on his car, so, you know, um, lost his life in a, in a tragic plane crash as a champion. Yep. So for his foundation to give back and search out and, and with drivers like yourself throughout the country is a pretty big deal. Yeah, I mean, certainly just looking back and seeing the story of Alan Kowicki himself just, you know, really makes it such an honor to be racing with his name on our car and racing under his colors and having some of his staff members, his public relations guy, and the board members, his former car chief and crew chief that were, you know, ultimately selected me to be one of their seven finalists for the program. And, you know, just going back to the story, you know, again, like you said, small town guy from Wisconsin, uh, you know, grind, grinded his teeth in the Midwest with a short track racing and decided in 1986 that uh, was a good time for him to compete at the cup level uh, for Rookie of the Year against Michael Waltrip and sold everything he had, uh, got about $20,000 out of it, and took a borrowed truck with a small trailer and headed south to Charlotte with really no intentions, just a dream of making it to Cup and you know, met, met people along the way, found a place to stay, uh, went through countless sponsor interviews just trying to get something, you know, convinced his first sponsor, Quincy Steakhouse, which he had never heard of at the time, to sponsored him for Daytona in 90, 1986 and then you know kept making it work and kept pursuing it and ended up winning the Rookie of the Year honors in 86 
and uh, you know the rest was history. Of course, in '92, the great, the, you know, one of the closest finishes in Cup history, uh, with him winning the championship, um, in of all races, the Hooters 500 at Atlanta Motor Speedway, yeah. beating out Bill Elliott by 10 points, just because he led one more extra lap than Bill Elliott, which gave him the extra bonus points, which enabled him to win the championship. Yeah, no, and then, you know, and which brings us to 2015 and the deal that they have going on. And take us through that process and how you are now one of the seven finalists because I would be willing to bet there was hundreds, maybe thousands of people that applied for this. It's certainly going to be uh, eye-opening for myself because it's going to make you stop and realize the other things you need to do outside of working on the race car and maintain that and competing weekly. you got to stop and do the media portion. you got to get a website, get that updated. The social media, they also, you know, promote that. You know, you got to keep up on that and also reach out to other potential sponsors too and, you know, show them what you can do for them. They don't really care about your racing. They don't care if you can't make it to the racetrack or not. Most of them don't. So you got to, you know, they're going to work with me to show me some good aspects on how to gain future promotional sponsors. And, and again, just, uh, you know, I had the dream myself when I was a young kid, you know, started driving things around when I was two or three years old and uh, you know I could say I certainly have a dream like Alan to make it to you know the upper levels of NASCAR one day whether it happens or not you know we'll do everything we can and this is probably the last great opportunity I'll have with Quickie on our side. Yeah no and it's pretty cool and and so you've already got some sponsorship dolls maybe you haven't got them yet but being one of the seven finalists you guys all got what seven thousand seven hundred seventy seven dollars and seventy seven right. cents right <laughs> you know which was yeah. Alan's number you know seven. Right. And uh, so then it's just a process now where, you know, when do they pick the, the winner who takes that program into 2016 with them with a major sponsorship? Right. Yeah. So it's, it's not just about on the track performance. You know, they, they'll base it somewhat off of that. You know, there's going to be a point system kind of like the NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series is concerned. But they also look how you do off the track, how you do with public events and supporting some foundations, volunteering, and stuff like that as well. How you interact with fans through your social media, through your websites. Um, you know, watching the video that uh, Tom Roberts sent to me of the Alan Quickie story called Dare to Dream, you, you see when Alan, you know, essentially picked up the Hooters sponsorship, how he was doing countless uh, meetings and doing autograph sessions for all these fans and, you know, that kind of thing right there. I'd, certainly, I'd love to do that. I mean, it's very unfortunate you know, the incident that took place when he was with three representatives from his primary sponsor, Hooters, in that plane crash in Tennessee. But, um, you know, they're going to judge you in many ways other than just how you do on the track. I've always said, if I sponsor, if I got a company and I sponsor you, you win a race, that's a bonus. Right. That's not what I'm after. Yeah. What I'm after is how you interact in with the fans, in with the media, in with the track, mm -hmm. okay? And probably the best example I can give of anybody around that that did that and there's a couple of them that, that one of them and really made a living is Andy Santana right. you know I mean he started grassroots like us you know a little track up at Speedway 95 right mm -hmm. look how he ended up because of being that guy not afraid to get in in front of your face not in your face in front of your face do that meteor type of stuff do you know uh, the good things at the tracks and be that fan friendly racer Brad Layton's another one that comes to mind, you know. And, you know, now a lot of the kids, the drivers, they think, you know, to go on, you know, social media and Facebook and bash their track or bash their local competitors or, or you know, all that stuff. That, that, that's negative attention. Yeah. I mean, and we've all done it. I mean, I, I'm the last guy that should be telling you how to act, right? <laughs> Trust me, you know, I got plenty of skeletons in my closet. But, you know, it's just, yeah, the world has changed. You know, because years ago, Alan Quickie didn't have to worry about the internet and Facebook and all that stuff. Now you do, you know, and right. one bad move from you. Um, and I remember at the Northeast Motorsports Expo a couple of years ago, Kyle Fredrickson was telling us, uh, you know, how a young man lost his sponsor because of MySpace. And he had a good sponsor. Mm. Lost it because of MySpace. And it was nothing that he did on his MySpace, but it was the way his friends treated his MySpace and the things they talked about and said it, you know, and... And, and, yeah, so there are a lot of things. And, you know, and I think it is good that this program isn't only looking about the on-track performance. It's the off-track that they're looking at. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned the MySpace, Facebook stuff. You know, I try to primarily use mine only for racing purposes only. You know, I know people create their sports pages about some drivers and teams. So, 
you know, you certainly want to avoid that conflict and save the drama, I guess. Essentially, there's, there's really no room for that in this day and age. And, um, you know, certainly, you know, these guys are going to be looking for it. Um, they're going to keep track of me. They want me to create a Twitter account, which I've never used, but they want it so I can keep track of the race and give them updates weekly. And, and, and again, they're just going to be looking for that interaction. They want to know how I'm doing. Uh, we probably will see Tom Roberts uh, here in Maine one weekend. Maybe he'll bring along Paul Andrews or Tony Gibson. Boy, that'd be pretty neat to see them at the racetrack one night looking yep. for me and interacting with other the local short track drivers here in Maine. Yeah, no, and it's, uh, it's a, quite an honor. And, you know, and to me, this is one of the things that, that I think the fans and the staff at Beach Ridge need to also embrace is one of their own is up for this. You know, it was a, a few years ago, like when we did the young gun thing, somebody's going to get a chance to go down to Loudoun, mm -hmm. something every kid's dreamed of. Now, you know, now it can happen, right. you know, but at the time, you know, the K&N East had moved away from what it was the old NASCAR North days. So when we did that, you know, that's what I encouraged the tracks to do was embrace your drivers. And I'm saying Beatridge should do the same thing with you. Embrace the opportunity that you have given because it's obviously putting you on the map, but it's also bringing more attention to that product there. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I remember when I interviewed with the uh, the Quickie folks during some of their board interviews, because they interviewed the top 15 finalists, essentially, and based off the applications, the resumes, and that interview picked their seven finalists. But you got to learn more about them, and that's one of the key things in racing, in work, professional life, no matter what it is. You've got to learn the people you're dealing with, learn what they're interested in, so you can kind of build a relationship. And that's really what it's all about. So... You know, one of the guys I talked to is, they nicknamed him Thumper. You know, he's from Wisconsin. He was a long family friend for Allen, but he worked at Marinette Shipyard in Wisconsin for almost 35 years. So, you know, instantly, well, hey, look at that. I work at Bath Ironworks. I'm a shipbuilder myself. And ultimately, instantly, you felt that connection with him, uh, just talking about, you know, outside of racing things, talk about shipyards oh, yeah. and what we do. So, I mean, right then and there, you know, that was neat to get him probably going on that direction and build the relationship yeah it takes a little focus off the racing but dave i want to i want to thank you for taking the time and coming down and sitting with us here on mainly motorsports and as we recap 2014 talked about 2015 and the great opportunity you have with the kawiki driver development program all right well very good i appreciate it um again great opportunity i look forward to working with the quickie team and um, like i said we probably see a couple of heroes or people we know from the NASCAR levels that could show up at the track any given night. No, I think you're right. But good luck on everything that you got going on. And once again, it's the Pro Series champion from Beach Ridge this past season, Dave Farrington, Jr. Welcome to Mainly Motorsports. To order copies of a show, send a check or money order for $15, shipping and handling included, to Mainly Motorsports, 326 Roosevelt Trail, Wyndham, Maine, 04062. And please add a description of the show. I did not grow up in the car business. I started as a technician in a small garage, and now lucky enough to own my own dealership. I think buying a new car should be hassle-free with pricing up front. We like to negotiate with everyone the same way. Our goal is for our customers to feel good and make it easy and quick if they so desire. We pay our sales staff to help satisfy your needs, not to collect a traditional commission. Southern Maine Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Maine's only Viper dealer, Route 1 Saco. Award season event is going on now. Patman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables, and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Patman himself. Just letting you know that Patman's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. Legendary race car driver Bentley Warren is putting a rundle on the map. When Bentley's saloon opened in 2004, it was just a little bar room on the side of the road. Today we have a giant saloon with live music, dancing, and great food and drink indoors and out. We're always looking to meet new friends and have a good old time. 
there's always something exciting going on at Bentley's. That's why we like to say, Who has more fun than us? We do! Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by... Moody's Collision Centers, now with seven convenient locations. Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, Portland, Sanford, Lewiston, and now South Portland. Visit us at moodyscollision.com. Scotch Recreation. Whether you're thinking about your first camper or looking to upgrade your current one, Scotch Recreation can help you. Get both our Route 202 Manchester and our Route 4 Turner locations and online at scotchrecreation.com. New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Join us for our 25th anniversary year. Well, welcome back to Mainly Motorsports. We want to welcome you to the historic Hickory Motor Speedway. And uh, I mean, the names that have raced at this track over the years, you know, Ralph Ant Earnhardt, Ned Jarrett, Harry Gant, Jack Ingram. And here we are standing out here, and we catch up with one of our guys, Austin Terrio, uh, relocated down to North Carolina. But uh, have you ever been to this track, Austin? Yeah, I've raced here a couple times. It's always a, it's always a fun time to, you know, when I'm not racing, to come and watch local short track racing. And, you know, that's why your show's around. It's, it's all about people getting out to their local short track and, and supporting it. So I'm, uh, that's why I'm here tonight. And it's weird. I pulled in. You guys were doing some sort of deal, and I, we shouted. I shouted over to you. So... That's yeah. why I'm here now. And I think that is the coolest stuff, you know, guys like you off weekends, you know, uh, uh, traveling and supporting short track racing because it wasn't long ago you were that kid sitting in the stands wanting to have that shot to race these super late models and, and everything. And, and some of the names that have raced at a track like this, and, you know, one of the names that sticks out when I look at this board behind us is Pete Silver. And obviously you don't recognize that name, but, you know, he's a guy from Unity, Maine that packed up his stuff years ago, long before Austin Terrio ever thought of packing his stuff up and heading south. And one a championship at this racetrack it's all about taking chances I mean there's plenty of guys that came before me uh, packed up their stuff and headed south and you know whether it's heading uh, to the south from the west coast or the east coast or from up from up in Maine it's all about taking chances and uh, when you have a dream or when you have something in your head it, it's about um, just trying it and sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't but you got to take the, you got to take a chance, right? Speaking of that trying it, man, I haven't really. I mean, we texted after Daytona, but wow, how really, Austin? How big was that? You know, leading laps at Daytona, the big stage. I mean, you don't have time to think about it then, but since then, what are the thoughts that have gone through your mind? It was it was a really humbling opportunity. You know, the first time I I went out on the track and practice, uh, a lot of guys were like, you know, it was, it's no big deal. You'll just hold it to the floor, but the sensation of speed there is pretty substantial and it took me a couple runs to actually just uh, I was calm but you know how it is you know you got to hit your marks you got to be focused and it did take me about a run until I felt comfortable hitting my marks and, and, and being focused it's just uh, sensation of speed there is, is a lot so but the run like you said going back to that run it, it was a huge day for everybody um, you know my teammate winning he's running for the championship so happy for him and all that but the 29 had a good points day and and not to say I didn't try for the win, you know, coming out of four, I was actually, I was actually trying to win the race. Dude, I wasn't, didn't work out. I wasn't sitting there going 190 miles an hour like you were, and my stomach was churning watching you be a pinball yeah. coming to the check-in, but you did a great job, and you did the whole state proud, and we all can't wait till you get back in a seat for Kansas, right? Yeah. Kansas is coming up pretty soon in May, but uh, really anxious to get back behind the wheel. The 29's been fast, so hopefully we can keep it going. All right, well, that's Austin Terry. I want to thank you, and now we're going to go find a seat with you. We're going to watch some super late model racing. Who's your pick to win tonight? Well, i got a couple friends in the field that I've helped over the years. Um, the kid, Lucas Jones, he's in the 16 car, so I'm just going to keep an eye on up, keep an eye on for him and see if I can help him after the race. All right, well, there you go. Well, thank you, Austin, and we're going to be taking a break, and we'll come back, and we're going to show you some race action right here from Hickory, historic Hickory Motor Speedway. Today's vehicles are equipped with complex safety features such as anti-lock brakes, seat belt restraints, and airbag systems. Even collision avoidance systems. Not available in all models. Hi, I'm Sean Moody from Moody's Collision Centers. We don't wish bad luck on anyone, but even with today's technology, we need to keep our eyes on the road and our hands on the wheel. Moody's Collision Centers, now with nine locations in Maine.
we've got the car you've been looking for at OT Motor Sales. Shop online at otmotorsales.com. Not sure what brand tire to buy? Town Fair Tire has them all. Michelin, Goodyear, Firestone, Bridgestone, Pirelli, Toyo, Yokohama, Hankook, and more. No matter what size or brand, Town Fair Tire beats all the competition, even online prices. We'll also do a free front wheel alignment with any tire purchase. Name brand tires. The lowest prices. Free alignment. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Name brands at discount prices. Town Fair I did not grow up in the car business. I started as a technician in a small garage and now lucky enough to own my own dealership. I think buying a new car should be hassle free with pricing up front. We like to negotiate with everyone the same way. Our goal is for our customers to feel good and make it easy and quick if they so desire. We pay our sales staff to help satisfy your needs, not to collect a traditional commission. Southern Maine Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Maine's only Viper dealer, Route 1 Saco. Award season event is going on now. Hi, I'm Scott from Scott's Recreation. 2014 was our best year ever. We have been named Maine's largest travel trailer dealer, Maine's largest fifth wheel dealer, Maine's largest motorhome dealer, and Maine's number one volume dealer for all RVs. Why? Selection, prices, and a relaxed, no pressure sales process. For 2015, we've brought in even more RVs. To your complete inventory online at scottsrecreation.com. Scott's Recreation, Turner and Manchester, Maine. Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Four Season Synthetic. See them for all your Amsoil product needs. Town Fair Tire, with six locations in Maine. Auburn, Augusta, Bangor, Biddeford, South Portland, and Topsom. Awards and Recognition, your number one source in New England for all of your award needs. 
All right, we're here with our fourth place finisher, and uh, Ben, you got to be so excited on how your year started off here in 2015. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, coming out of here with a fourth, with the, the quality of cars here today, I thought it was a good run. We were we were a little off and uh, and finished fourth, so I, I'm happy. I'm ecstatic. Uh, I can't thank the guys enough. I can't thank Richard and Josh enough. Um, it's been a long couple of years, you know. We, we've turned this thing around now, and, and the last four races we haven't finished worse than four, so. I'm looking forward to it. We'll, we'll clean this thing off and uh, get up to north. Yeah, I was going to say, you've got to be excited to go north. I mean, I know Eddie's been with you through these last couple of years, and it's tight, but Dean Clattenburg, you made a change, went with uh, him, and, you know, he's worked with you guys and worked and worked, and he hasn't given up, and you guys haven't given up. And you've started this year off with a, a win and a fourth, and, you know, and now you just hope that momentum carries to the north. Yeah, I have no doubt. Uh, we showed up here this weekend and was right on top of things, but uh, I can't thank Dean enough, you know. All the guys that he, he's got down here around him, um, GW, all, just the guys that we put together. You know, there's four or five good guys. Eddie comes down with us, and uh, we have a good time. It's, it's back to having fun, you know, good time. The, the car's got speed in it, so we're looking forward to it. All right, well, I'm going to go on record to tell everybody that they will see Ben Rowe in victory lane in the north this year. So don't make me wrong. Uh, I plan on not making you wrong. Trust me, that's, uh, that's our goal. We, we won down here. Now uh, I, I want to get back in victory lane up north. All right, Ben, great job tonight. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right. All right, new car, new team, but the same old, old Mike Rowe. And I say old Mike Rowe, not old. I mean, unbelievable, Mike. You just put a clinic on tonight to finish third tonight. Yeah, you know, I suck during time trial. I just can't time trial worth beans. And, uh, you know, we started too far back. And I think I used my stuff up because I started getting tight in the middle and loose off. And we just had a baby at home. Yeah, and you baby at home, but... Uh, you know, at the end, you were racing with Benji, and I mean, it's been a, been a few years before you since you've been racing with Benji, and more so with his struggles than you. But I mean, that had to be fun, and I mean, you guys raced hard, and you got by him, and he said he just took off, you know. Yeah, you know, I, I could see his weak point, and uh, you know, I followed him, kind of set him up a little bit, uh, you know, and uh, you know, I, I just had to just had to get by him. I borrowed his suit and shoes this weekend, everything else, so. Uh, yeah, you know, earlier in victory lane with his suit on. Earlier, I looked and I said, "Why is Benji Rowe laying on the ground, looking under his father's car?" I couldn't figure it out why. Couldn't figure out why he would even be on the ground, but that explains it. But you got to be pleased. I mean, this kicks off your 2015 season. You got high expectations. You got a new group of guys, and I mean, looking forward to going up in the north and trying to win some races. Yeah, you know, we hope so. Uh, it's just uh, one of those deals we hope we can do good. Oh, you'll do fine, and that's a guy, no matter where you go, everybody knows who you are. You're like that guy from those, those guys used to sit on the bar stools at Cheers. Everybody knows your name, and that's tonight's third-place finisher, Mike Rowe. Good job, bud. Thank you. Looking for a great time, great people, and great food? Then visit New England's number one biker destination, Bentley Saloon, owned by legendary super modified driver Bentley Warren. Bentley's is a biker bar that welcomes everyone. Staying in the area, Bentley's has their own full service campground right on site. Tuesdays, Bentley's cruise night attracts car enthusiasts from all over New England. Located on Route 1 in Arundel, Bentley Saloon guarantees a great time. Check out the fun at BentleySaloon.com and see why Bentley says, Who has more fun than us? Don't let the other guys rough you up. Shop online at otmotorsales.com. All right, Tyler, it's been a big night for you. Runner-up finish, crowned from last year's championship. Uh, I mean, if you're going to finish second, though, you don't mind finishing second to Preston, right? No, not really. I mean, he uh, he had a good car tonight. We uh, we just couldn't turn getting in through the middle, and, uh, and there's some things I wish I could have done different, but I learned from it, and then... Uh, and considering we only made five laps of practice earlier and uh, the rear end gears they just sheared apart and it blew the whole cover off the rear end and blew some studs out of it and so we actually barred the rear end from preston just to run the race so uh yeah it's it's been a long hard fault day a lot of people to thank uh, my daddy my uncle johnny preston murray tim done a lot to help me today uh ryan turner um you know, all of us have worked together, and, and uh, it's it's a privilege to be a part of them. And uh, I want to give a shout out to the Alan Kowicki uh, Driver Development Program. 
uh, for their support. Um, I know I might not have been selected for their top seven, but uh, there's a lot of things uh, that behind the scenes that, that they've helped me do. And, and just the support, and, and and I think the main goal is to get Allen nominated for the Hall of Fame, uh, NASCAR Hall of Fame, and uh, so if I can get the word out, you know, to help them, that's what I want to do. You know what, Bud? That's awesome. Because let me tell you why. In my TV show, the first half of the show, we talked with one of the seven finalists, Dave Farrington Jr., and we spent a segment talking about the Allen Quickie thing. So to hear you mention it, I mean, it is a big deal to these young racers because there's not many Allen Quickies that are going to come through the ranks anymore. I mean, he did it. I mean, we watch the kids now. I'm not saying they don't deserve the opportunities they're getting, but none of them are going to do it like Allen Quickie did. Hard work, working on his car, hauling it to the races. And for a guy like you, a young man like you, to mention Allen Quickie, that's a huge deal. And, and I mean, it really is. Uh, like I say, they, they, they've supported me and, and uh, Tom Roberts, he, he's, uh, you know, we've gotten to be pretty close and, and uh, I know he's kind of, uh-oh. We're tearing him up here in the pits. No, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, you get that on camera? Yeah, we're but, wrecking him uh, in the pits. Yeah. So, uh, but no, I, I, I want to say thank you to them, you know, and uh, it's just, there's a lot of good things going. Uh, yeah, I'm disappointed to finish second, you know, especially because I have to work with Preston. Now i got to go back to work and hear from everybody, but... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm no, and you should be. And I'm tell you, I've talked to you a couple other times when we come down to South. You always run at the front, and uh, you're very appreciative of the people that give you the opportunity to do this. And uh, you know, I'd love to see the opportunity for you to come up north and race one of them big races up there in the main area in New Hampshire area. You know, and and show some of the guys up there what you're all about because you're one hell of a little racer. Well, I appreciate that. You know, and, it, and just like earlier when we had a rear end break, I could go up and down Pitt Road, and there's not, you know. I don't know of anybody that wouldn't help me out, and, and that, that means a lot to me. I mean, I, that shows a lot about your character, you as a young man. Well, and there's everybody's got, you know, everybody can get ill and everybody can get upset, but you know, it's uh, at the end of the day. There's bigger things to worry about than a race, and ain't there? There are, just like Easter, you know, what what Jesus done for us. So it's it's you know, I don't have nothing to hang my head down about. Nope. Uh, got a lot of good things going. Uh, Getting married in August, little girlfriend Heather. We uh, been together six years or so, and uh, so got to make sure and mention her in this too. Oh yeah, where's Heather? Where is Heather? Yeah. Is that Heather? Got to get Heather on there, right? I mean, that's a big deal, yeah. right? Well, oh, you're gonna take your gloves off. Come in here. Oh, take it off. Take it off. Well, yeah, well, oh, we got the ring. Oh yeah, we'll we'll get the ring. Off. There you go. Well, you get, out, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're getting married yeah, in August. Go. I mean, I'm learning everything here. What, you want a business card so we can get invited to the wedding? I bring you good luck, you know? Hey, hey, well, you know no, come to the races too, then. All right. No, <laughs> how proud are you of Tyler? I mean, with his no-give-up attitude. He is great. I love him. He did great tonight. Oh, well, thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, we're gonna, oh that's uh, sweet. I don't know if we've ever done that on camera. Is that a first? You, I'm not kissing you. No, no, you ain't going to kiss me. I, no, that is a first. But she no. ain't neither. No? <laughs> no, that's all right. I got Louie. <laughs> no, but no, great job. And I'll tell you, really, it's a privilege to watch you race and the way you present yourself, not only on the track, but off the track. But great job tonight, Tyler. All right. I appreciate it again. Thank you, now. All right. Thank you. That great wedding. All right, I told you when I first saw you after the race, that was an ass kicking without the actual kicking of the ass. I mean, how good was this Hampke race car tonight? Man, I'll tell you, that Dodge, that Hampke Dodge was just... It was on fire, you know. Everybody here knew, you know. They were all talking and complaining about the body and the weight, and uh, you know. So it, it, everybody we come across was like, you know, if you don't break or wreck or something strange don't happen, then you know this thing's gonna be in victory lane. And um, I guess they were right, you know. Well, I saw you a little earlier, and I didn't talk to you, but I could see that confidence in you. Not cockiness confidence in you and you know the work that you do behind the scenes not on your race car you know you were a big part of getting Tyler back together you know helping these young kids on the pro late model ranks you know getting them and teaching them how to race and there's so much to this just driving the race car there's so much more to it and uh, you know so I love to see a guy like yourself giving back to the sport yeah you know uh, Chandler we you know we kind of took that deal on this year um, he's really doing a good job he's very talented uh, I mean, I've been fortunate enough to work with some talented drivers. Cole, Tyler, uh, you know, Cole spanked him at the, the cars race and, uh, you know, last weekend. And yep. it, it, this is just a testament to that. And, and, you, and it, we're all really close. You know, like if, if Tyler had that rear end brake and it just so happened, like I never have extra parts on my trailer, but I had a rear end sitting in there and that's what he broke. So uh, 
um, you know, my hat's off to those guys. They got it changed, and uh, you know, he had a he had a good night. Yeah, and he mentioned you and your, your group of guys, and uh, you know, and who could say enough about Robert and his staff at Hampke Race Cars? You know, I mean, it, you know, this is the old adage. You know, we win on Sunday, we sell on Monday, and uh, I don't know. No, I'm sorry. no, that's fine, man. It was we watched it over there. Everybody's in a hurry to go home. That five minutes, what's that save you? Uh, I don't. It, it doesn't save anything, and it could get somebody killed. Is, you know, I mean, that's that's just crazy. Yeah, no, exactly. But uh, yeah, we were talking about Robert and his entire staff. You know, and I, I never forget the first time I ever met Robert. We was racing down in Florence, South Carolina, when I was with Mike Rowe back in 2006, and this guy just kept hollering and you know and I think he was saying probably hollers at you when you win the race right yeah you know it's just his demeanor but he's a great guy and he gives a lot of you kids and I mean you're not a kid but some of these other guys are gives them great opportunities I'll tell you I love Robert you know it, you just have to know how to take him and uh, you know some people they, they don't realize how he is and and once you get to know him like he get take the shirt off your off his back to help you out, and uh, you know it's just the whole group. The whole group just a great group of guys. Yeah, and like I said, Tyler was the first one to mention you guys about f helping him fix his problems. So, I mean, a big win down here. I know you don't race all the races. Last year you came up, made a little bit of noise at the 250 in Oxford, but you know the day didn't end like you wanted to. I know you led some laps, but yeah. what about this August? Well, we'll have to see how it plays out. Um, I, I, we didn't have the help that we needed there, and we got the lefts on the rights and the rights on the lefts on the pit stop in oh, the rear <laughs> with a spool, and that don't work out too good. Yeah, no, so that explains a lot of the, yeah. you know, where the handling went. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it, we'll have to just – I'm not going to do a whole lot of racing this year. I'd like to run some big races, but, man, they kill me. You know, when you go there and you spend all that money and you don't win – it hurts bad you know so that's kind of where i'm at right now i went to the derby i spent a ton of money not e not even close to what some of them other guys are spending i did it as cheap as i could and it was still a ton of money and we you know we had a terrible outing and so it put me way behind you know yeah so exactly and that's what racing does but you know you're still involved you're not the guy sitting home on the couch watching movies when racing's going on if you weren't racing tonight I bet Preston Peltier is here tonight helping these young kids and helping anybody he could. Well, I wasn't racing last Saturday night, and I was helping Cole win that race, so that was pretty awesome. But No, that's good, but congratulations to you and your entire team, and uh, every time we go up at a racetrack, you're one of the guys that we always watch because you're always at the top of the speed shots and more than likely in the top three. So tonight's winner, Preston Peltier, what is it, your third Easter Bunny? Third Easter Bunny. Third Easter Bunny, so now you're going to have some eggs tomorrow, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, great job, guy. Thank you.